Ah, uh, yes. The year is 1999. What a year. How could you forget that year? It was 1999. This is when everybody wanted to party like it was 1999. And we also wanted to party because supposedly in the year 2000, Y2K was going to happen and there was going to be mass hysteria everywhere. Computers would stop working. Nobody knows what the future held. Kind of sounds like today's times, if you ask me. Every year we make it through, more and more memories are locked into place in our minds. Certain video games or movies or even a simple chorus from a song you knew and loved can mean so much. Let's take a moment and talk about what makes each year from our past so special. On today's episode, the year is... Let me start off by saying I wasn't just inspired by my good friends at Gaming Off The Grid to do these videos. Yes, I am copying them straight up. They did a look back at 1999. I was like, that was so fun to watch. They looked at video games from that time, movies from that time, and music at that time, and just kind of sat back and relaxed, no script, and talked about big important things during this year that really stood out to them. So I wanted to do the same. I want to look at a whole bunch of different years like they're doing. So gaming off the grid this is me asking for your blessing but also accepting it at the same time because I love you and we have really weird conversations on Marco Polo that probably shouldn't be seen by the public let's start off 1999 with movies one of my favorites being Fight Club. Fight Club was an interesting one because I remember when the movie came out, I hadn't heard anything about it until I saw the cover for it on a DVD or a VHS, I can't remember. But I remember seeing the pink bar of soap and being like, that's gonna be lame, this is probably like a really girly chick flick. Until I saw it, and pretty much since that day, and I'll be 100% honest with everybody, Brad Pitt's body style and his fitness re regimen, whatever you wanna call it, that he had in that movie is kinda what I've always aspired to be built like my whole life, I'll be 100% honest. When I have my fitness goals, that's kind of one of my goals. I've told a lot of people that. The Matrix, talk about a huge staple in the world of cinematography and videography, and I think the staple backbend came from that movie. Also, you have movies like Boondock Saints that came out, which was, to me, one of the most bad A movies I had seen up to that point, or that I felt like maybe I was allowed to see. But when I saw the Boondock Saints, Holy cow, I loved that movie and I still love it to this day. If you got kids, probably don't show it to them. Mystery Men, a movie with Ben Stiller that I think was amazing. This was basically a movie that was like a superhero movie, but a bunch of misfits, a bunch of weirdos, a bunch of dorks. Heck, one of their guys' names is The Spleen, and he would have fart problems. And there was guys in there with lisps, and that's the way they talked, and it was goofy, and it was silly, and it just was such a blast to watch. Even to this day, Ricky and I both yell when we're getting into a car, shotgun. Big Daddy, one of Adam Sandler's best. What a fun movie, but also I feel like the first Adam Sandler movie that I watched where I also felt like a, a heartwarming sense, you know, in the movie. I watched movies obviously previously like Happy Gilmore or Billy Madison, but I think Big Daddy really made me go, Aw. Getting into some darker movies, The Sixth Sense. I mean, I See Dead People is one of the biggest quoted quotes in movies ever anywhere to this day. That movie, I think, really twisted everybody and took us on a big ride because, yeah, movies have done it since then where, spoiler alert, you were kind of dead the whole time. That's kind of what happened in the movie. But when The Sixth Sense did it, it was something that I wasn't used to. I don't think anybody was really used to it. So to find out that one of the main characters was dead this whole time was like, Whoa, it was almost like Super Mario 2 when you found out Mario was sleeping the whole time. You're like, what? How? Big one for me, The Blair Witch Project. I saw this with my two brothers in the movie theaters and man, that movie scared me to death. This is when internet was a thing, but it wasn't like it is today. Social media wasn't really a thing. And man, when The Blair Witch came out, this had everybody wondering, was this real footage? Was this movie real? It was shot in very first person, very janky camera, weird angles, bad angles, crazy angles, things that didn't make sense to cinematography 
movie nowadays. And man, that movie had me scared out of my wits. I remember coming home and it's the first time I saw a movie where when I got out of the car, I was with my brothers. And remember, I'm in, I'm in high school at this point. I'm a big boy. And I got out of the car and I took a little too long to find my stuff and my brothers had already started walking to the house. And I genuinely sat there frozen and said, Adam, Nathan, you gotta come back. I I'm not walking back to the car or back to the house myself. I couldn't get myself to do it. That movie scared the wits out of me. Uh, looking back at it, I don't know how it holds up. I haven't seen it in a while, but man at the time, Blair Witch. Masterpiece at the time. Last movie I'll talk about before I head on into video games is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. And again, seeing this when it came out, being a kid, a freshman in high school, not watching reviews, not seeing what people say, not technically being a Star Wars snob by any means. I mean, I liked the other Star Wars movies that came out before it, but seeing this, I had no problem with it. I liked the movie. I didn't mind Jar Jar Binks. I don't remember having any ill will or ill favor towards Jar Jar Binks until years later realizing, oh, I guess people really don't like this guy. Also, Darth Maul was in that movie, which to me is still one of the greatest characters in the Star Wars universe. I was actually really bummed when I saw him die at the time. I was like, oh, that guy was super cool. That guy was extremely awesome. He was obviously pretty good at what he does for taking out somebody pretty darn important. So Star Wars Phantom Menace, I liked it. Episode one, still to this day, I still hold it as a movie I like. Not even just for a Star Wars movie, it's just a movie I like in general. So come at me. Now going into video games. I'm gonna start off by one that I didn't even realize came out in 1999 until I looked at it, and that's Silent Hill. To me, the definition of survival horror. The best example we've ever had of survival horror video games ever. I know most people in the world at this point say Silent Hill 2 is the best Silent Hill game ever made, but I still think I'm gonna hold it as Silent Hill 1, uh, just because I have way much more attachment to it. I definitely put more hours into it, beat it more than once, more times than I beat uh, Silent Hill 2. And I remember seeing Seeing your character walk through the dense fog or smoke or ashes or at that time not knowing what it was and not only feeling like I need to explore, you know, I've done that in video games previously, but I felt like I was, I was lost, but I was so scared of stopping being lost. You know, in real life, if you stop and you're lost somewhere, it's not a good thing. But in video games, if I was lost, normally I would just stop and turn off the game or look up a walkthrough or ask a friend. But in this game, I genuinely couldn't get myself to stop playing. I felt like I had to find out where to go because my daughter, Cheryl, needs help. And that game really stuck out to me and it still does to this day. So to be a 1999 video game, Magnificent. Smash Bros for the N64. Probably one of the most fun games ever made in existence. I know there's a lot of go-to four-player games in the world, especially nowadays. A lot of indie companies have been making some. Mario Karts, Mario Parties, uh, tons of others, but I think Smash Bros to me kind of still holds the cake. As I say that, I'm looking at a giant Smash Bros mural that I have up here that Ricky's son gave me. Uh, Smash Brothers just defines fun for me. It's everything we could have imagined as kids, uh, knowing the characters that we loved, that we grew to love, you know, from the NES days, Super Nintendo, and being like, all these people that we grew to love are gonna be in one game uh, was mind blowing. And I know it wasn't originally supposed to be that, it was like a different game with just polygons and stuff like that. Nintendo decided to put Nintendo IP characters in there. Brilliant move uh, that has worked out obviously extremely well to this day, but that's not what we're talking about. So, Smash Bros. 1999. Muy bueno. Crazy Taxi came out in the arcades in the year 1999 and on Dreamcast in the year 2000, but the arcade version I loved so much. Crazy Taxi to me broke the mold of what I was used to playing with playing racing games. I liked like overhead view racing games like Off-Road Baja and other things like that, some of the four player games, the arcade cabs, but I never was able to get into the ones where you like sit down and like drive a little more realistic. I feel like Crazy Taxi was that perfect mix of like arcade fun and realisticness, even though there's not really much a sense of realisticness in it. But I felt like, oh, I actually enjoyed the missions in this game. I never liked doing like any sort of mission in racing games or even some of the laps always felt boring. But in Crazy Taxi, it was nonstop. It was go, go, go. The formula was perfect. Like go here, drop this person off. Now go, 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 go. I feel like it actually is perfect for someone like me who has ADD because it kind of just threw you everywhere. So crazy taxi, 
awesome. I'm putting this in there as an honorable mention, and that's Shenmue. And the reason I say it's an honorable mention is because I don't necessarily really love Shenmue like most people. I liked the game, but I also am very well aware of what most people thought of Shenmue, how it kind of broke a certain mold, how it was more just like a living simulator, even some people, of going through life and living and playing arcade games and this and that, side missions. But uh, it wasn't necessarily my thing, but I'm putting it in there because I know the staple that it was for many people. Donkey Kong 64, I really liked this game. Obviously, it's synonymous with the DK rap, but uh, it was just a fun break from what we had grown to know in Donkey Kong. I also realized that Donkey Kong has moved in so many different ways from the original arcade versions to side-scrolling platforming on the Super Nintendo to 3D platform and then Nintendo 64. So pretty rad, Donkey Kong 64, nice job. DK Donkey Kong. That was like the worst ever attempt at even making a rap sound. 1999, we got one of the most important games to me ever, and that is Counter-Strike for the PC. I played it on the PC, Half-Life Counter-Strike, at a place called Cyberdeck for $2 an hour, a cyber cafe. Holy moly, I played the heck out of this game. I think this is where I could first tell myself, you know, I loved video games previously, love, 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 obsessed, but this is where I think video games almost became an addiction at a certain point in my life, because man, Ricky and I, and my brother Adam, and a guy named Sean, we would go to this place, like I said, called Cyberdeck, and which I think still exists, weirdly enough, and we would play hundreds and hundreds of hours of Counter-Strike. This is where I got so into FPS games, which I've talked about before. It took my enjoyment and love of games like GoldenEye to the next level of like, I'm obsessed. I want to be good. I want to be the best. People would get in fights at that place because it was a cyber cap. People, who, people would stand up. Hey, who's computer 22? Hey, it was me. You want to go, bro? No, you shouldn't have sniped me there. It was... It was awesome. It was a good times. Counter-Strike, uh, yeah, amazing. Video games in 1999, pretty bueno. Let me know what you guys liked. Scar Tissue by Red Hot Chili Peppers was a big one for me. I really liked that song. I feel like that's also when I kind of started tailing out of liking Red Hot Chili Peppers. I don't really care for their music much more. I've also heard a lot of people say I look like the lead singer. I can't even remember his name. Ooh, Matchbox 20 had a song called Back to Good. I love that song still to this day. I love Matchbox 20. Me and my cousin, his, whose name is Chris Brown, Matchbox 20 was one of our big bands at the time that we always loved. And Back to Good is a song I also just really Really, really enjoy. I wrote down She's So High by Tall Bachman. She's so high, I can't sing. But I, I never knew that the singer was Tall Bachman. I feel like it's one of those names where I couldn't have told you how to sung it for a million dollars, but I could sing you the whole song if you wanted me to. Another big one I just saw down below, Goo Goo Dolls. Black Balloon. I do really like that song. Goo Goo Dolls holds a special place in my heart because I would listen to Goo Goo Dolls a lot when I first started dating my wife, my wife, when I first started dating my girlfriend in high school named Chanel, who has now become my wife. And I remember Black Balloon, baby is Black Balloon, let's it fly. We would always listen to that song. So holds a good place in my heart, Goo Goo Dolls, a good one in 1999. Hard Knock Life by Jay-Z. I think it was called the ghetto version or something like that. But Hard Knock Life was previously, I think, a song from Annie. I could be completely wrong, but I feel like that's true. But Jay-Z had an updated version, which I really liked a lot. Um, I remember just thinking it was so cool at the time and always singing it, singing it with my brothers. We would even do like fun little, like, uh, what do you call it, choreographies to it, which uh, was not the normal for us. So we must have really liked the song because we would always do it. And Jay-Z, uh, I don't know his music nowadays or even if he's still putting out music, but during 1999 and that time, I remember really liking and loving a lot of Jay-Z's music. The last two I'm gonna put together because I didn't necessarily like the songs, but I heard them a million times, and that's Genie in a Bottle by Christina Aguilera and All Star by Smash Mouth. Now, again, I heard these songs a lot, but I didn't necessarily like them, but that's because there was a tape playing in this VHS player when we were on vacation with a friend of mine that I don't really hang out with at all anymore. I haven't even heard from him, to be honest, probably since this time. But his parents were gone. He was gone. I couldn't get the TV working. I couldn't get things figured out. But what I could get is the VHS player to keep repeating. And for some reason, it would play over and over and over. Maybe they just had these things on repeat on the VHS. And that's what the whole tape was. But Genie in a Bottle and All Star by Smash Mouth. Man, I heard those songs like a hundred times in a few hours. Did I necessarily? I feel like I liked it for like the first three times I I heard him through, I was like, these are cool. And then I was like, I wanna rip my ears out. I can't stand listening to this again. Oh, 
All right, let me know what you guys enjoyed in 1999, whether you loved it or hated it, if it was impactful, or if you were young, if you were old, if you were even born, or whatnot. But you gotta give me a movie, music, and a video game, all from 1999. Thanks for Gaming Off The Grid for the awesome topic. Man, more people talk about these fun video responses to these, but I wanna do more of these, so I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna start from 1985, the year I was born, and just, Move my way forward. All right, guys, in the, in, the, in the audience, in the chat, in the chat, in the comment, in the comment section, let me know down below what you guys uh, were listening to, hearing, and playing in 1999. Peace out, muchachos and muchachas. Muchachas? Is muchachas really a thing? Muchachas. Hey, muchachos.